Good morning, everybody. Now this is spring. Couldn't ask for a better day than this, could you? Look at that sky. Isn't that nice? I haven't seen that for a while. And the garden is just beginning to wake up. Doesn't that just look beautiful? So lovely to see the sun. The sky's clouded over. And we've had constant rain for about two and a half hours. That's how you spoil a beautiful, beautiful spring day. Well, as the weather turns so wet, I decided to go shopping. So, we've got a nice little feeder for the quail, an automatic waterer. We've got some uh, diatomus. Yeah, I think that's how you spell it, how you pronounce it. Um, soil which is uh, good for poultry yeah diatomaceous earth um, healthy environment for poultry pets plants animals can be applied directly to and around poultry pets plants and animals uh, great for mites I have used it in the past for chickens um, and yes it does work nicely on top of that, um, I've got some fine bird sand, one and a half kilos of fine bird sand for them to uh, be able to have a dust bath. And of course, they need grit. One to uh, crop to, to have in their crop to uh, mash their food up. And uh, so here we are, uh, one and a half kilos of grit. Now, as far as calcium is concerned, because calcium is important in egg production, I'll be using eggshell, which um, I'll uh, dry in the oven and then uh, break them up into a fine um, sort of uh, powder type. And a hanging basket replacement chain, which I needed for one of the small hanging baskets. Um, I've decided to buy some hanging baskets rather than replace the rest, but... To keep in tune with what I've got, um, I decided to buy a, a replacement chain for it. And for all those that are squirmish, look away, because here comes a mealworm. And there's the mealworms. They, the quail will absolutely love these. Now, I'm going to be breeding these. I used to breed them when I had reptiles. So I will be breeding them. They are very, very simple. Um, mealworms after all are a beetle so I will show you how I set this up um, they uh, normally kept in uh, bran um, I have kept them in um, porridge oats as well and uh, they also like uh, a bit of fruit as well don't give them citrus though not unless you want to lose them, because I find that if you give them citrus, um, the acids in the citrus, you'll normally lose the whole brood. And uh, so I'll be I'll be breeding my own. Well, I've got lots more to come indoors yet, so uh, I'll see you in a moment when I get it all in. Of course, I mustn't forget Bo. So I've got him two Serrano bone hams. Um, here they are, they're about 3 79 each and uh, he'll spend all day on one of these but by the end of the day there's nothing left apart from bone and even then if the hocks, if the hock ends, the sockets are soft, he'll chew them down but all this meat goes and there's quite a lot of meat on, on these ones so he will like them, must never forget bone. On top of that, I've also got 
let me take you around also picked up a new tripod now my two tripods that I've already got are not the best in the world I'll show you. right that's a small one very light that's the uh, slightly bigger one I'll stand beside it so you can see as you can see that's that's its full height not very big at all so those two but um, even though that's a Jessup it's not a bad make that's a very cheap Chinese make but I did pick up one today which is a nice professional job and uh, I'm going to show you it right how's about that bad boy hey okay. it's uh, can splay right out if it's really windy it can splay right out so that it can't be knocked over and the height well you can see the height I'm still beside it it's around five foot so yeah that'll make a lot of the uh, videoing it's have a nice sturdy one and it's a nice height I can now sit at the table and do some bits and instead of having to keep altering the tripod because uh, or changing the tripod I can set this one up aim it down on the table and get a much more professional video right I'm going to get this other stuff in from the car well, the quail have found the uh, sand bath there's a bit of diatoma surf in there as well and uh, I'll be able to have a nice sun bath in there the uh, bird sand also contains a certain amount of grit um, I have put grit into the auto feeder there with the seed in and they've got their water over there so uh, yes I think they're now even happier and they're settling in really nicely they're not flying about all over the place when I come in um, they're getting used to me coming in and as you can see they're even not worried about me filming so things are looking good the uh, run itself has got some conifer in there which they're in and out of and they like hiding places it's got uh, some chopped shredded straw and in here there is a, a finely chopped hay there is a few seeds in amongst there so that uh, they will eat that as well but to give you a better view there we go there they are having a dust bath uh, that diet on his earth is getting in amongst his feathers and uh, that's how it does the job they have a dust bath in the uh, bird sand the fine bird sand with the diet on earth mixed in with it it gets in amongst all their feathers and uh, any little mites that they may have little parasites um, are dehydrated and suffocated and uh, and die on them so keeping them clean and healthy and uh, he's fully enjoying himself here eh? there you go they're both having a go now right I'm going to leave him to it Right, well the other thing I purchased this morning while I was out, obviously I went to the garden centre, was four more strawberries. I knew I'd, I'd get some more strawberries for that last hanging basket. That was obvious. Four more strawberries and these three pots. Now, 
They're a good size pot. They are. Let me get the tape the measure. They are. Let me see. Get that in the light so you can see where what it is. Roughly 22, which is eight and a half inches tall, with an overall width of 26, which is roughly 10, 10 and a quarter inches um, across. Now, and of course, which would be water trays underneath. Now, obviously, these, um, there's a couple of little knocks on them, and the paintwork around the outside isn't the, isn't at the best. It's um, as it come out of the factory, but they're rejects. Now, these were marked down originally as 9 99 I got to the garden centre at 10 past 9, and these were marked down at 4 99 So, three of them, 4 99 each. I think I'm a winner all day round. Got my coffee. It's uh, camp coffee. Now, if you don't know what camp coffee is, it's this one. Um, it's a chicory and coffee essence, and uh, I really like it. I got I got hooked on it with my grandfather. He used to drink it all the time. Um, I think he drank more camp coffee than he did tea. He got hooked on it when he served in India in the Second World War in uh, Afghanistan. So, sorry, the First World War. I'm not, I'm not going back far enough. Yes, it was on the Northwest Frontier, as you may have seen in various films. The Northwest Frontier in uh, 1914 to 1919. So, anyway, back to this. So, what is this for? Well, this is my ginger. Now, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I've got three good shoots on there. One, two, three. And all these little, sorry, all these little tips here are all going to shoot into buds as well and then into leaf. So, really good. The other thing we're going to plant is, just get it, <laughs> is my avocado now when you saw i showed you this in the week and it was about about sort of four it is now standing at the grand height of where are we there seven and a half inches which is 19 centimeters it's starting to grow rapidly so the roots are starting to come out of the base, so I do need to get it potted on. So I'm going to get it potted into one of these, and then get it into my lounge, um, and put it with the rest of the uh, plants on the table, and then as it gets bigger, it'll then go to uh, somewhere where it gets the sun, but lower down. So let me get you on the tripod. Move my coffee out of the way, building up coffee with uh, compost. This is uh, Johnny's uh, number three compost. And as you know, how much I love my Johnny's compost. Um, very happy with it, having great success with it. My house plants absolutely love the Johnny's number three, which is what it is. So, the first thing to do is get this one planted. So, what I'm going to do is take out some soil from the center so this one and go down till I think I'm around about the right depth for this pot press it down a bit and there we go then I've now got the hole for the pot impression hole for the to go into the uh, little bottom trays here, little water trays for 129, which um, isn't bad. So I'm going to carefully take that out. As you can see, the root structure is looking good, 
but it does need potting now before it gets any any worse. Pop that into there. Firm the soil around it. Put a bit more soil around it. Now I'm not going to go above the seed itself. But I'm going to go around the seed like so. Now what I do, that's that one. Now I'm going to do a swap bound. Bring this one over to here and slide this one across to that. Because I'm now going to put, so I, maybe it sounds like I'm straining because I am, because they're, they're not light. And I've got a back issue at the moment. Um, my back is not uh, the greatest at the moment. Then again, I need to take some of this out, which I'll put into this one. And just to get it so that uh, I can lay that ginger and I'll get it out into here. So let's see what we can do. Now the ginger's a bit more of a problem to get out because it sound it feels like it oh yes it is. Yeah. That give you some idea. There you go look. It's got some good roots on it. So I need to get that now, mix that bit around, get that all. There's another shoot I didn't notice, a new shoot coming upon the end there, look. No, I never noticed that one. So do the same again, don't take it down low, just keep it at... Uh, approximately the same height just press it down slightly nestle it in making sure that uh, I don't catch any of these these buds they're too precious to catch now when this is uh, finally done what I'll do is put a bit of, uh, I might just put vermiculite on the top, or I may put some fine gravel. Most recent some gravel on the avocado here, um, and maybe some vermiculite here, because this can then grow up. But there you go, that's that done. Now, I'm going to get the camera off and just show you. So let me take the camera off of here, bring it around. So there's the avocado, and as you see, I've left the seed above the soil as it was in the pot, and with the ginger, I've done the same. I've left it, I've left it as it is. Now I'm not got to worry about watering this at the moment, not today. I'm going to let it settle in because this is um, damp. It's not wet, but it's damp. Uh, so I'll let it settle in and I'll mostly water maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, I'll see how it goes. Right, I'm going to go and get, yes, I've got another ginger. I'm going to go out to the shed because I forgot to bring it in and get another ginger. And that's going to go in that one. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I just found my uh, camera had turned itself off. So... Another ginger from Oakgate Garden Centre, three ninety nine, and uh, let me show you it. It's not as good a piece as this one was. It's not as big. Um, it hasn't got so many buds, but there's a possible bud just there, 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 and there. So there's four possible buds there, which hopefully um, it's quite firm, so it's not scarred soft or anything. Hopefully this will take. So, I filled one of my little propagator trays. Take the ginger, and I'm gonna lay it on its side. Okay, so it's on its side like so. And just firm that in. Get a bit of soil, and just cover a bit of it. I'm not gonna cover all of it. And then this spray water 
Oh, I keep indoors and I keep it full at all times so that it's always at room temperature. And I'll give it a good spray. Now, I think the secret to getting that one going is every day, twice a day, sometimes three times a day, I spray it with water. And it seemed to uh, work really well. Let's put a bit more soil around just to. Uh, Help keep that so that moisture I've just put in. So there you go, that's that. Now I'm going to put the top on, keep it nice and warm. As I say, I didn't have it on in the uh, propagator until much later on, until about a week ago. This went purely, I'm going to worry about water falling out, I'm going to worry about worms out because this soil doesn't contain any insect life at all. That goes on the radiator which I'll just turn you around so you can see. And that's now on the radiator. And that will stay there till we get some good sign of life. Um, I think I will just now, as I said, I've been spraying this four times a day. I sprayed it this morning, so I think I'll give it its midday spray, just so that uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't feel like something really changed. Um, I'll give it a good spray. And the same with the avocado, I've been spraying that three times a day. And that may be the secret, I don't know. You've got to keep it moist. You've got to keep that whacking great big seed moist to let it crack open, get it soft, to let it crack open and uh, get going. So that's that done. Um, let me. Uh, Just, uh, well, that's, I think that's that done actually. So that's it for the moment. I'll catch you later.